Welcome to Lesson 9, which roughly covers pages 61 to 66 of the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python textbook. There's three parts to this lesson, functions, the nun value, and keyword arguments. You're already familiar with the print, input, and len functions from the previous lessons. Python provides several built-in functions like these, but you can also write your own functions. A function is like a mini program within a program. It contains code that executes when the function is called, just like your program contains code that executes when the program is run. Let's look at an example by opening a new file editor window. I'll type def hello to define this new function called hello, and the code inside of it will be print howdy, print howdy, print hello there. And then I'll call this function three times. Save it as example. And press F5 to run it. This code uses a def statement to define a new function called hello. The code in the block that follows the def statement is the body of the function. Whenever we call the hello function, the execution moves to the top of this function and executes the code inside of it. I'm going to copy and paste this code into the visualization tool at pythontutor.com so we can see what this does better. Visualize execution. You can see that the def statement only defines a function. It doesn't execute the code inside of it. The execution skips its block when the function is first defined. The code inside the function only runs when the function is called. At that point, the execution moves inside of the function and then moves down as normal. At the very end, the execution returns to the function call and then proceeds down to the next line. Here we call it again, so the execution moves into the hello function again. And then we call it a third time and the execution moves into the hello function again. The main purpose of functions is to group code that gets executed multiple times. Without a function defined, you would have to copy and paste this code each time, and the program would look like this. Copy and paste, and copy and paste, and copy and paste. In general, you always want to avoid duplicating code, because if you ever decide to update the code, if, for example, you find a bug that you need to fix, you'll have to remember to change the code everywhere you copied it. As you get more programming experience, you'll often find yourself deduplicating code, which means to get rid of duplicated or copied and pasted code. Deduplication makes your program shorter, easier to read, and easier to update. When you call the print or len function, you pass in values called arguments. These arguments go in between the parentheses. So let's change the code in the Python Tutor tool and type in the following to add arguments to our code. We'll add name here in between the parentheses, and then add the code print hello plus name. And then we'll call it twice. The first time, we'll pass the string Alice, and the second time, we'll pass the string Bob. So in between the def statements parentheses is the name variable, which in this context is called a parameter. When the function is called, the name parameter is assigned the argument that is passed. So we'll define the function, and then we call the hello function, passing the Alice string as the argument. This argument gets assigned to the name parameter, and then we just execute the code inside the function. On the second call to the hello function, we pass the string bob as the argument. The argument gets assigned to the name parameter, and then we execute it as normal. Just to get the terminology straight, the strings Alice and Bob, these values, are called arguments, while the variable 
here is called a parameter. When you call the len function and pass it an argument such as the string hello, the function call evaluates to the integer value 5, which is the length of the string you passed it. Function calls can be part of expressions because they evaluate to the value returned by the function call. Let's try the expression hello has plus call the string function, call the len function, and pass it hello plus letters in it. This expression evaluates down to this string. It has these two function calls in it. We'll use this expression of uh, demonstration tool to show you what happens at each step. So here's the original expression. Python will call the len function and pass it hello, which returns the integer value 5, since it has 5 characters in it. Then in order to do string concatenation, we have to turn this integer value 5 into a string value, so we pass it to the string function, which then returns the value 5 as a string, and then we just do string concatenation. So function calls can be part of expressions because they evaluate to a value returned by the function call. When creating a function using the def statement, you can specify what return value should be with a return statement. In the file editor, let's write the following code. We'll define a function called plus one. It has, a, it has a parameter called number. And then we have a return statement where it returns number plus one. The value that this expression evaluates to will be the return value of this function. We can call this function and say pass it the integer value 5. 5 gets assigned a number, and this will return 5 plus 1. So this function call evaluates the integer 6. Let's save that in a variable called new number. And then we can just pass that new number variable to print. So when we run this program, it displays 6. You might be wondering, since all function calls return values, what does the print function return? If you type the string hello into the interactive shell, this evaluates to itself, hello. But when you call print and pass it the string hello, the quotes for the string aren't there. This is because print doesn't return the string, it just displays the string as a side effect. It actually returns a special value called none. That's typed none with a capital N and no quotes, kind of like the true and false boolean values. The none value is the only value of the none type data type. It's a value that represents a lack of a value, and this comes in handy in a lot of different programs. The thing is, in the interactive shell, none doesn't show up if you enter it. It's not like a string value or an integer value which gets displayed. The interactive shell is specifically programmed not to bother printing, uh, printing this out, and that's because whenever we have a call to print like this, we want it to print that string out, but we also don't, in this case, don't want it to show that none return value that print returns, which is why nothing shows up here. But print does return the none value as its return value. You could have some code like spam equals print, and spam, nothing shows up because the none value is in spam. We could have something like spam equals equals none, which is an expression that evaluates to true. What you should take away from this is that every function call has a return value, even the print function. But you don't have to have a return statement in all of your functions. If your function doesn't have a return statement, the return value defaults to the none value. Some functions have a kind of argument called keyword arguments. These are often used for optional arguments to pass to a function call. For example, the print function usually adds a new line to the end of the string it prints. In a file editor, let's just enter this code. Print hello, print world, and press F5 to run that. 
These two strings appear on separate lines because the print function automatically adds a new line character to the end of the string it's passed. So that causes a new line to start after hello is print and a new line to start after world is print. However, you can set the end keyword argument to change this to a different string besides the new line character. We can do that by doing this. Add a comma, to pass in a new argument. It's the keyword argument end, which is equal to the value, uh, the string value blank, the blank string, which causes, since there's no new line after hello, world ends up on the same line as the previous print call. Similarly, when you pass multiple string values to print, the function will the print function will automatically separate them with a single space character. So I can pass multiple arguments to print like cat, dog, mouse, and it automatically adds a single space character in between them. However, if I pass the sep keyword argument, this will this will allow, allow me to change what the separating character is. And I could say, make this ABC instead of a single space. And now the string ABC appears in between each of the arguments that it prints out. These keyword arguments are optional. Most of the time you don't need them, but the end and sep keyword arguments make the print function display exactly what you want it to. To recap, functions are like a mini program inside your program. The main point of functions is to get rid of duplicate code. The def statement defines a function. The input to functions are arguments. The output is the return value. The parameters are variables in between the function's parentheses in the def statement. The arguments are assigned to these parameters. The return value is specified using the return statement. Every function has a return value. If your function doesn't have a return statement, the default return value is the none value. And keyword arguments to functions are usually for optional arguments. The print function has keyword arguments end and sep.